Hello adventurers, just got back from an epic trip up north to the Zoitdorp wreck site. Just want to say a couple of things before you start watching this. There is a preamble at the start of the movie which is taken down in the museum where a lot of the Zoitdorp artifacts are. At about the five minute mark it starts from up at Kalbarri where we head north to the actual site of the wreck. The second thing I want to say is uh, I'm a history buff and I like history but I'm no expert so I'll link down below to some videos and information from the experts on this uh, ship and shipwreck and you can read at your leisure. So I hope you enjoy and I'll catch you on the next one. Hello adventurers. So, really interesting one. For those of, of you that are waiting for my bike travels, uh, that will come. I have some organised, um, but it'll be a little later on. This is one of the last ones in the full drive. So, I'm out in the front of the WA Shipwreck Museum. This trip, we are going to go up and have a look at the site of a shipwreck. Um, very remote site, very few people ever go there. Uh, it's actually a, a museum site. You need permission and permits to go there, which we have. So the ship is the Zoitdorp. Um, it left in 1711, it left Holland and made its way around to uh, what is now South Africa. On the way, 112 people died of scurvy and possibly malaria when they went too close to the coast in tropical Africa. It uh, got more supplies and more people and made its way across the Roaring Forties where it made a mistake uh, in navigation and crashed into the um, to the rocks uh, about 40 k's north of Kalbarri. It was carrying 250,000 silver guilders and uh, some other supplies for uh, Batavia, which is now Jakarta, which it was going to trade for spices and other things. So let's uh, go inside and take a look. So we're just going to make our way upstairs. This is where most of the Zoitdorp stuff is uh, in this museum, is upstairs here. So we'll uh, go check it out. So this is a cannon from the Zoitdorp. So this is the size of the cannons. So VOC basically stands for the Dutch East India Company. So there's the top of one of the anchors from the Zoitdorp. And if you have a look, it goes all the way down to the bottom floor. It's quite a big anchor. Over here, the ship had 250,000 guilders and here they are. Here's some of them here. So these are probably quite a bit bigger than a, an Australian penny, bigger than a 50 cent piece. So this shows how they would be all cemented together on the bottom of the ocean floor. You would have to put them in acid, I guess, to release them if you wanted to do that. So here's a picture of the Kalbarri and Zoitdorp cliffs with the tripod or thing they made up. And this is some of the artifacts that they found. So some really interesting things, some like tacks, shoe tacks or thumb tacks. Little looks like hinges of some description there. Some pottery and glass. Here's part of the bell, you often see that in uh, pictures. Some shot. And some small cannons. And a lock. So the interesting thing about these clay pipes and things like this is, is that they reckon up to 200 of the survivors clamoured to shore and uh, could have lived there for quite some years and there's all sorts of theories about what happened to them and the most common theory is they integrated into the Aboriginal population 
but for some time they would have been at the top of the cliffs lighting fires and doing whatever they could to attract the attention of other ships. So they, these pipes and different bits of pottery and that would have been what they had grabbed from the ship when they, uh, when they ran aground to, to get up onto the cliffs. So this is one of the spars. This is what's left of one of the spars off the ship. Dr. Playford. So he was very instrumental in this whole story. So here is a model of the Zoidorp. So as you can see, it's a reasonable sized ship. There's the anchor down there. That is the anchor that's out there. So that gives you an idea of the size of the ship. So not too bad. And over here is the lead ingots, the type of lead ingots that used to be ballast in there that they found on the bottom of the ocean near the Zoidorp. So there's a little bit of information from inside the museum on the Zoidorp and some of the things that uh, were recovered from the site in the early days. The first expedition started about the 1920s, I think 25-ish, all the way through to sort of different expeditions up to the 70s, maybe 80s. Um, so, yep, pretty interesting. So we're going to head up to Kalbarri where the adventure will really start. So um, let's uh, jump up there now. So we made it up to Kalbarri, uh, I'm sitting here up on top of the lookout, it's actually the Zoidorp lookout, I'll show you the uh, plaque and that for that in a minute. Uh, we're in Kalbarri, there's the town site, there's the coastline, we're going to be heading up there, staying close to the coast up until we get to the wreck site, it's about 65 k's up there, I think I said it was 40 earlier but it's 65. The tracks up there aren't used, there's no actual roads or anything up there, it's a station. Um, so the first part of it I think will be okay and then the second part of it might get a bit scratchy. We may have to open up some of the roads because um, they're not used very often. Um, so there's a few shacks and things up there that we'll take a look at uh, from abalone fishermen uh, back in the day. So it should be a uh, pretty good um, day's drive to, to get up to the site and um, I'll take some footage along the way and, and show you what that's like. We're going to go through a station which is just over here. Uh, the Murchison Station, we'll take a look at that and we'll cross the river and then uh, up we'll go. So let's take a look at the uh, plaque and a uh, bit of information they've got here. So this map is a bit hard to see now but we're here at Kalbarri and we're going to be driving all the way up inland to about there uh, and from there on it's Tamala Station and then Shark Bay. So that's the route we'll be taking. And this is a photograph of the ship, the Zoidorp, what it looked like before it hit the rocks. So we're on the track heading out to the homestead. Some nice views from up here. This is the station, it's got some old 
relics around the front of it. The old, one of the station owners used to collect this sort of thing. Okay, we'll get on to the uh, main homestead. So we're coming down towards the river now because the homestead is on the river. Um, and now a lot of tourists camp here, so it's a pretty popular camp spot. Got some river gums. So the quad bike hire is in here, or some sort of quad bike hire, probably for the station. And here's all the old home, all the old uh, buildings. I need another military tank that that uh, station owner used to used to uh, collect. And we're going to stop here and have a look around. So this is some of the old ruins at the station because it goes back quite a way. So Meadows. Old uh, Southern Cross or something. There's an old sickle. And there you go, there's a shell. Some great relics in here. Oh, here you go for the bottle collectors. I don't know if any of these are worth anything. No marbles in there. This looks like some sort of landing craft with tracks. So So this isn't a sunshine harvester. Port Bagshaw. Hallwood Bagshaw Harvester. Oh, here, old shearing shed. Stock saddles. The old uh, Ajax type. Who makes this wool press? Don't know, can't really make that out. But uh, you jump up and down on that handle and it ratchets down the top and presses the wool. She would have been hard work back in the day. This is where the sheep got pulled out of, shorn and then pushed down the hole to the outside. And then here would have been where the combs and cutters got uh, sharpened. Really cool. So we're heading off through the station. Uh, we'll have a quick look at his uh, stuff behind here and then we'll be on our way. So this is a working station. This station um, mainly now I think is about goats. So wild feral goats and they muster them by in the summer they just get uh, put the water on one of the bores and the goats will come in and then they just go capture them. And now they don't close the gate. Now to let the tyres down and uh, get on the tracks. But just stab my tyres right here. So we're on our way, tyres down, 
first point of interest. Which I think will either be a well or a shack. So the country's opened up a little bit more now. Um, um, a lot of waddle, a lot of scrub. So just a bit of a track. So we're sort of heading towards the coast and we'll swing directly north and uh, parallel the coast. So it's got a bit sandier and a bit tighter, but it's still not too bad, still pretty easy. I think this is about as sandy as it gets on the way up. So we're just heading um, up a fence. We're just taking a, another track to this out camp. Just come across a big, um, big bear patch, a big open area. That's just a natural open area. Sort of reminds me of a an African sort of savanna. There's goats and emus running up up there. Looks like we're going to come up on top of this ridge. We might get a. I might stop up here, get a bit of footage or something. Yep. So here, there's a big breakaway coming down onto this flat area, and there's a dam over here. So this would be a hot spot for all sorts of animals, all grass and uh, food to eat. And uh, there used to be a windmill in there, but you can see there's a dam there. So really interesting spot considering that we've been in pretty well sand and limestone the whole way. So I'm going to go and get the uh, camera and take a couple of pictures. So we're heading back north now. We're going. Next stop will be GGI GG Camp. There's some history behind that camp, which I'll explain when I get there, um, in relation to the Zoitdorp. But uh, we're back heading north again on this uh, little twin track. This shack called the GGI Art Camp is significant in this story. It was home of Tom Pepper. He discovered the Zoitdorp wreck when he was out trapping dingoes and decided to climb down the rocks for a fish. He saw some what he thought were green shells and once he cleaned them up in some acid he worked out they were coins. Later on he told Philip Playford, a young exploration geologist at the time, about the wreck and gave him some general directions to the site. Philip Playford blazed a path with his Land Rover all the way out to the site to where he saw more artifacts and on closer look he knew he was onto something. So let's go and take a look inside the shack and see what life was like for a station hand in 1927. So veranda out the front and we come in first room so there's a uh, stove I would guess there there's the front of it some cupboards over here these were probably bedrooms and a bathroom out there where that's fallen down and then a room in here. So very small concrete floor, um, probably local timber. The roof is proper dressed timber just with uh, poles of local timber. So I uh, grabbed the metal detector and went for a bit of a detect, but I uh, just found a whole bunch of bullet shells and that I really only went for about 10, 20 minutes just to see what was here. No Zoitdorp silver coins. So uh, we're gonna pack up and uh, head off after a bit of lunch. 
<clears throat> so heading back through the um, open area from GGI Art Camp where Tom Pepper used to live where a lot of the Zoidorp artifacts ended up that he found and the um, as I said earlier the uh, figurine from the back of the ship so we're gonna head probably south a little bit and before we head across to the coast to go back north um, we may be able to go north from here and cut across but we don't actually know so I don't want to go heading all the way up north to work out we can't get across um, so that's what we're uh, that's what the plans are so um, oh, some gates up in front so uh, probably take a little bit of time to to get back to the uh, road we know so as you can see the oceans just there Ooh, paper track and we're a bit further north so up here there's a turn off to um, an old shack and we're going to go and take a look at the old shack I think it's a, a fishing shack not sure if it was an abalone shack but it's an old shack that fishermen use when they're up here um, so the part we're in here is reasonably frequented by fishermen um, when we get north of the fence that's when uh, no one really goes up there that's the that's going to be the uh, the part that is going to be more closed over I expect and uh, harder to get through but um, the reason for that is is that where the fence meets the ocean is the last of where any beaches or any good fishing spots are north of there is effectively cliffs the whole way to Shark Bay so uh, it's hard fishing up there so yep not far to go and we'll be uh, turning left that keeps on going north we'll come back to there circle here that people turn around in and we'll be heading up further up there so this is a sand track heading due west heading to Whitey shack the fishing shack so we'll see what it's like I haven't been here camera probably doesn't do it justice so here's an old Toyota didn't make it home don't know if that rusted buff out it's a bit windy so I don't know if you'll uh, get that noise Oh, if we need a spare. So it was a petrol. Shack can't be too far away. Oh, here it is. All right, so there she is. Let's go and take a look. No. Table, fish cleaning, maybe. Oh, yeah, the bedrooms. Ocean views from the window. It's pretty cool. The sink looks like the sink's seen better days. I don't know if I'd like to uh, spend a day in here, or a night, sorry. She's just pretty noisy. That's Whitey's shack, and uh, now we're going to head back north. I think there's one more shack. One more shack until um, until we hit the fence. So let's uh, head back out. Vermin Pro fence shouldn't be far in front of us. And then from there, I'm expecting the track to get a lot more closed in. So 
So this is the last bit which very few people go on and it's going to be a little slow and a little overgrown no doubt and a little scratchy. But let's see how we go. It'll be worth it no doubt. As you can see the track's getting less defined and more just a couple of ruts rocky and overgrown in patches. It's not too bad here, the scrub's lower. But you definitely wouldn't want to come out here, just the earlier piece, if you didn't like bush pinstripes, because uh, yeah, a lot of screechy sounds back there a little way. This is getting pretty closed in. So not a track that you go if you don't want bush pinstripes. She's uh, pretty scratchy. And you can try and avoid it, but in the end, you just can't. As you can hear. So this is pretty steep. You can see I'm pointing down and the other side's going straight up. Here comes <coughs> Mark in the Colorado. So we're not too far now from the turn off to the wreck of the Zoitdorp. Um, we're just on the last um, part of the track, probably a couple of kilometres. It's been pretty slow going. Some steep rocky terrain and some tight bush. And I don't have on this car, I should, I'll probably get them on now, I just never bothered, but um, some rock sliders, because some of it was probably needed rock sliders and some armour on the bottom. I just had to take it super easy and be super careful. So, but as far as the four-wheel drive goes, it crawled up there, no problems at all. So we'll be turning off, or we'll be uh, sw uh, swinging left and then turning off to the left on the main track that heads back to the where the wreck hit the, um, hit the uh, rocks. Uh, looks like this is a bit closed in. We might have to get the saw out for this bit.
So we're nearly at the uh, turn off. Um, maybe this is it here. Hang on, tick, very cool. I think this is a turn off here. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, we're not, well, not exactly on my map, but I don't trust the map 100%. Yeah, this is what I sort of did it from Google Earth and sort of worked out the road. So um, I'm pretty sure this is it. Yeah, mate, no worries. Yeah, we'll go down here. So this, I think, is the turn off Hope to the wreck. Not too many people obviously come out here. We're getting close, the ocean's just here behind the camera and uh, we're getting close to where the actual ship hit the rocks and we're gonna take a quick look then we'll probably head back to back, just back there and um, probably camp up there, out of the way of the wind. Oh, she's pretty rough, pretty rocky, pretty closed in. I've had to uh, cut a fair bit to get the car through, just the uh, just the branches sticking into the onto the road. I think this must be it right here. Oh, there's the cave with the columns. So it's pretty windy, but I hope you can hear. So here, right there, 300 years ago, the Zoidorf hit these rocks. And in the water just off there, there's still around 200,000 coins, silver coins. But I'm not going in to get them. People want to climb it up here. And there's a cave. Cave up here. There you can see. And up in there they would have sheltered and there's smoke on the roof where they light, lit fires. And there's fires being lit up around the top here for signaling the ships. So we're going to take a look, a quick look, and then we're going to head back and uh, find a camp. So up in these cliffs they say there's smoke stains on the roof where people sheltered you can see it's got like pillars holding it up you can see it's all black up in here So right here, 300 years ago, there would have been Dutch people wondering what the hell to do next. Which way to walk? Magnificent view, but probably not if you're shipwrecked. I imagine a bunch of them were injured, probably crawled up into there and took a break for a little bit. Well, it's pretty surreal being here knowing what happened. You can imagine slamming into that in the middle of the night.
Okay, let's go and find a campsite for now and uh, get set up. So as the sun's going down, Mark's going to be set up, up and running. Very professional. We've got a fire going. We've got mine over here. Swag at the back. We'll cook a bit of stuff in here. And settle in for the night. So I'm cooking. So let's get to it. <coughs> I thought I'd better get the camera out to show the uh, dinner. There's some uh, sweet potato, potato, sausages, chili, beans, all simmering away in there. Normally I only eat so I don't die, but I've got Mark here, and he is a little bit more civilised than me. So we'll see how that is later.